Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss text validation tests in SQL Server. A best practice is to load all data types as text. That way you can land the data without any issues, then start parsing it out to the various end or target data types. Why is that relevant here? Because it means that text data validations are going to be a very useful tool in your tool belt. There are 24 examples in this rule set, and we're going to start with not null right now. To get started, open a browser, set the URL to github.com slash data research labs, all one word. Find and click the SQL scripts project there or here. Scroll down and click the data validation scripts link. And then scroll down. In our case, we want to find SQL Server and we want to find rule set number six for text values. Click that. And now we'll begin walking through some of these test cases. There's a whole bunch of them. We're going to start with not null. So not null, we've seen some of the prior videos. It's pretty straightforward. Moving along to test case number 22, it's checking for a not null string. Whereas 21 was checking for a traditional database null, SQL Server has a null string, just a quote and a quote together, nothing in between. And sometimes you want to check for that in the same way you check for a null. Uh, next up, test case 23, looking for leading or trailing spaces. All the same SQL logic, it's just that in the business logic here, we're looking for the country name is like a space with a wildcard percent for a leading space. And if there's any of those, it'll pop a rejection code. And then the country name like wildcard any characters with a space at the end for a trailing space. That's how you do that. Test case number 24, checking if a text value is in a value list. And so we're, we want to make sure that all values are in the list of valid values. So our business logic is going to check for when it's not in the list and pop a fail if it's not in the list. Moving along to 25, it's the opposite. We want to check and see if the value of a given field, of a given table, <clears throat> is not in the value list. So if it is in the value list, then we'll pop an error. Moving along, test case 26, a multi-field compare. This one, basically, the logic is right here. Ignore this. This is just the test data. I needed to exclude some stuff from the test data, so ignore that. The parts that matter here are that we're selecting the email, the first name, the last name, and when the email is not equal to the first letter, uppercase of the first name plus the last name, but only the first eight characters combined of all of that, then pop a fail. So there's some business rule in how this company derives email addresses with uppercase, first letter, first name, plus the next seven characters of the last name. And so that's just checking that that uh, business rule is being enforced. Moving along to test case number 27, the text length. When you pull in, say, a phone number field from an employee's table, and there's an international or a U.S. national format. So one's 12, the other's 18. So what we're looking for is, hey, make sure that the phone number is in either, is a length, the length of the phone number is either 12 or 18 characters. If it's not, pop an error. Moving along to upper and lower case characters. A little bit trickier in SQL Server. What we're doing here is, in the inner query, taking the employees table, taking the job ID, taking the last name, just displaying them, but the magic happens here, and that's where we're saying, hey, when the job ID, and then we collate it with this value right here that's highlighted. I think that was for alpha sort. I can't remember. But anyway, we take the job ID and we collate it so that it's case sensitive. Basically, I think that's what the CS is, it's case sensitive. And so now that job ID is case sensitive, we can compare it to upper job ID. And if it's any lowercase values are in there compared to all uppercase forced, then you'll pop an error. If you don't do the collation, even if job ID were all lowercase, SQL Server, depending on how your server's configured with collation, but the default is it's not case sensitive. So lowercase job ID would equal uppercase job ID. So you have to do this collation for SQL Server. Uh, anyway, so we're saying if there's any lowercase so that it doesn't equal uppercase, pop an error. And then the second check, verifying that the last name Starts with an uppercase character, and then all the rest of the characters are lowercase. Moving along to alpha and numeric characters. 
So SQL Server has some nice features built in that are regular expression-like. So in the SQL Server-like command, percent is a wild card that says any character and any number of any characters before any number of any characters after. And then we're saying, hey, if there's any characters uppercase A through uppercase Z or lowercase A through lowercase Z, probably don't have to do that because we're not collating. But anyway, if there's any alpha characters anywhere in employee ID, pop an error because it's not supposed to have alpha characters. And then likewise, last name. If and we don't care about characters before or after, we just care about any one character in the string. If any one character in the string is the digit zero through nine, pop an error because last name's not supposed to have numeric digits. So this is kind of a neat way to do alpha and numeric checks in SQL Server. No quote characters. This is a good one. If you want to verify that a text string <clears throat> has no quote characters, in this case, we're going to look at the first name and say, hey, we don't care what the characters are before or after, but if there is one double quote somewhere in that first name field, pop an error. And likewise, if there's one single quote, but in SQL Server, to escape the single quote, you put two single quotes in a row. And when this gets sent to SQL Server, it'll get collapsed down into a single quote. So anyway, does first name contain a single quote? escaped or does first name contain a double quote in either case pop an error carriage return line feeds this is really handy and i think at this point i'm going to switch over to sql server now it's not going to really help that much but let's run this in our sql we get all the last names there aren't any line feeds or carriage returns so they're all a pass but if there was a carriage return or line feed somewhere in a last name then a rejection 01 would have been displayed here and it would have said field last name has a line feed character and it would have because of the cast care index blah 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 basically it would have told us oh at position 15 in this string there was a carriage return line feed so it's really handy to have this logic built in to the SQL string and if you go to the advanced script results and watch one of those videos you'll see why okay let's move along to test case number 32 and that's very similar to carriage return line feed, but you're looking for tab characters. The only thing you really change is you're looking for a car nine instead of a car 10 or 13. You just go through the ASCII table and plunk in what you need to. Test case 33, we're looking for non-breaking space characters. Uh, non-breaking spaces are the alt 160 on the numeric keypad or the car 160. And if you do three or four of those in a row, the it won't go to a new line in HTML, et cetera. So anyway, you'll run into this sometimes and it can be a problem, so it's nice to trap, trap for those. Uh, test case 34, looking for no M dash character. That is a car 151 on the ASCII character, and that's a common Microsoft Word uh, thing, issue. Here, I popped up Word to demonstrate it for you. So you're typing along, la, 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 and then you put two dashes, a space, start typing something, space. Now watch the two dashes, they become one dash. That's an M dash. And anything using Word, so Outlook, OneNote, et cetera, you'll inadvertently have these M dashes created, not realize that you'll copy all the text or a user will copy all the text, they'll paste it into your system, and now you have this flaky ASCII character that sometimes can cause problems if you're turning around displaying the data and it takes you a while to figure out where did that come from? Well, it came from something that was word-based and it's an M dash and it is car 151 that you're trapping for. <clears throat> in the same logic, well, in this case, we're just passing and fail it, but we could have done the trickier logic like up here and put the position in of the car 151. Anyway, moving along, M dash, uh, vertical tabs, form feeds, next lines. I haven't really run across those, but if you do, you can trap for them. Car 11, car 12, car 133, vertical tab, form feed, next line. Test case 36, if you don't want periods or dashes, here you don't have to worry about the character code the car code, you can just put in a single quote period, single quote, or a dash, and it's just looking for either of those, and if those are in the string, pop a fail. Other bad characters that you can look for, this is a little bit nicer way, it's, it's similar to regular expression. So in this case, we're looking for a last name, we're using SQL Server's like operator, we have a wildcard percent at the beginning and end, meaning that we don't care, we're looking at one character at a time, don't care what's before or after, and inside the brackets, we're saying, if that one character is a comma, slash, colon, parenthesis, ampersand, et cetera, if any of these characters appear in the string, pop a fail. 
Moving along to test case 38, maybe we want to verify that only the allowed characters, <clears throat> like for a phone number, are present. So this is similar to up here, no bad characters. Look for any of these. Only the allowed is the opposite, and that's what this little guy is for. Same like operator, same like operator, same wildcard before and after, meaning we don't care what the characters are. We care about one character at a time, and this guy, the caret, the shift six key, inside of a square bracket of a like operator means where the character is not any of these. So where the character is not a period or a zero through nine. If it's not a numeric digit, uh, you know, you could change it to dash if you wanted you to, to use dashes in your phone number, but we're doing periods in the phone number. So this is a really slick way to say, hey, pop an error if the field contains any characters that are not in this list. Very handy. You'll use that a lot. Test case 39, the general like wildcards, and we're using a phone number, and we're looking at different patterns. So we want to see, hey, the phone number does not contain a period for a separator. They're all jumbled together. And for this particular business rule, it's not supposed to be that way. We want three digits, dot, three digits, dot, four digits. So if there's no periods, pop an error. The next one is a little bit more stringent, the second rejection code, and it's saying, hey, if it's not the typical American 3.3.4, pop an error, or international, 011 is our international code, and then two digits, and then the three and the four. If it doesn't follow those patterns, at least the test data that I based it off of, that was the two patterns. So anyway, the takeaways here, the like operator, an underscore means any one character. So in this case, I'm enforcing that there's one, two, three characters, and then it has to be a dot, and then three characters, and then a dot. If the phone number is not standard American, North American phone, and the phone number is not this other international format, including a bunch of different extension stuff, and starting with 011, uh, is numeric. So we're going to take a zip five, moving along to test case 40. And we're saying, hey, if the zip five does not contain a character between zero and nine, so if any one character, what I have highlighted there, is not zero through nine, pop a fail. Test case 41. These, you could use regular expressions in other data platforms, but I did this approach everywhere because it's universal. It may not perform as well, but anyway, what's going on is, and there's test case 41, 42, 43, 44, all very similar, but the difference is verify that this text string is this date format, year, 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 month, month, day, day, or verify that it's month, month, slash, day, day, slash, y, or verify it's mm, you know, same thing with dashes instead of slashes, and then the final one is the years come first and then dash MMDD. So very similar, four different test cases. And back to the original one here, test 41. A lot going on here. Maybe let's just visualize it. Let's just run that and see, yeah, that's not really gonna help. It is gonna show that, hey, here's the raw data, 2002, 08, 17, and it's a pass. So let's take that first one and run it through. So select that field. Okay, there it is, dumped. Now this block is saying, go derive the pass or fail logic. And if it's a fail, go tell me exactly why it failed, what rejection code. So the first rejection code here is, hey, I have unexpected characters. So <laughs> it's kind of a funny little trick. You take this value and you say, replace all the zeros with nothing, ones with nothing, twos, threes, fours, blah, 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 blah. If you replace all those characters with nothing, what you should have at the end is nothing. So if nothing is equal to nothing, you pass this test. If there's any remaining characters that were not 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 through 9, then you're going to have something. An A is greater than nothing, and so it'll pop an error. So this is just a way to say, hey, are they all numeric digits without using the like operator and that other trick that we saw earlier. You could use either, but this is universal, that's why I chose it. For SQL Server, it'd probably be better to use the like operator. Anyway, uh, the next check is this field expects eight characters. If there's nine characters, pop an error. Might as well know that specifically. Uh, the next logic check is make sure the year part, substring the position one to four, 
2002, make sure it's between these years. And the next part is make sure the months are between these, and the next part is make sure the dates are between these. Yeah, it's not a foolproof because you're going to have leap years with a 29th day. It's not going to check that. It's not even going to check all the months that are 30 days, let alone February, which is typically 28. So it's not the greatest of check, but it's a pretty quick check to find if something's way out of whack and quickly tell you which of these rejection codes was triggered. It's the same thing here. It's just that we add on slashes and remove them as well. And we change up the positions of where we're looking for the year, month, day. And it's the same thing here, except we use dashes. And again, we change up the position of year, month, day when we're checking. And for test case 44, same thing, dash and change up the positions. And that wraps up all the text values. I went through them pretty quickly. You can uh, look at the end of this section of this video and uh, jump ahead. There's skip uh, pair, uh, sections in YouTube and you can jump to it. And you can see where to uh, cut all that crap. To download the SQL scripts for this video, open up the browser and go to https colon github.com slash data research labs, all one word, hit enter. On here, you'll find a SQL scripts link somewhere. It happens to be here, it happens to be here. You can search for it on the page. Anyway, find it, click it, and just scroll down on the page. And you'll see the information on the page, skip data dictionary, data validation scripts. That's what you want, click that. Scroll down, you can read the details on that, how to use it, what it is, notes, and then here we go. So SQL Server, there's all the different scripts. MySQL, I don't have the scripts written yet, I gotta do that. Oracle, I have the scripts and the videos done. So find the link you want. Let's say diff checks, click it. Scroll down, and these ones are so big, the SQL snippets, that I had to roll them up and co or collapse them. Uh, anyway, let's expand that. There's the details, and here's the big long SQL script that diffs the schema, the column names, table names, data types, etc. So I have an expected set, and then you compare it. Anyway, the uh, little clipboard icon here is what you would click to copy all of this properly formatted and ready to go. And it's in the clipboard, so why don't I pop open a brand new notepad and paste what's in the clipboard. There we go. There's all the SQL from the script ready to go. You can use it in your SQL editor. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.